Welcome to another Witcher lore video guys. So today's video is pretty much a part 2 of my Witcher Dragons lore video. Because as I mentioned in my Witcher Dragons lore video, I was going to start a little mini series on dragons where I would discuss each breed of dragon. But after looking into it further, there isn't really enough information on each breed of dragon to be able to make a video on each of them individually, so I thought for today's video, I would just compile all the information we have on all the breeds of dragons in the Witcher universe and make one video about it. So anyway, let's begin today's video. So the way I've decided to structure today's video is to basically discuss every breed of dragon, and I'm going to begin today's video by discussing green dragons. Green dragons are the smallest of all dragon breeds, and are said to be similar in size to horses. They are, however, much broader than a horse. Like all dragons, these dragons have a set of wings, but their wings are described as leathery. Unlike their name might suggest, these dragons aren't generally found in green colours, and are in fact more likely to be found in a greyish colour. They can also be found in a greenish colour, but it is much less common. So if you were to look for one of these dragons in the wild, if you were in the Witcher universe, you would most likely find them in a grey colour, and green is actually more rare. So I think it's funny that they're called green dragons even though they're more grey than green. Like most dragons, their means of defence and offence are their teeth, claws and fire. But just as a quick side note, not all green dragons or dragons in general for that matter, can breathe fire. And a lot can only spit acid or steam, and some can't do anything like that at all. And the environments you are most likely to find this dragon in include arid rocky regions. There is currently only one green dragon shown in the books, and this is Murtabraca, who you may remember from the book The Sword of Destiny. She was actually the dragon that villain Tretanmurth, the golden dragon, was trying to protect. You could also argue that Saskia is a green dragon, as it is said that Murtabraca is her mother, but as her father is villain Tretanmurth, she could also be considered a hybrid part green dragon, part golden. It's also assumed that the legendary dragon Ockvist may also have been a green dragon, and this is based on what is shown to us in Gwent the Witcher card game as he appears to be a grey dragon. And as we know, green dragons can be grey. Finally, to end this segment on green dragons, I will discuss the information told to us in the Witcher tabletop RPG about these dragons. The only new information presented to us in this tabletop RPG is a specific length for these dragons, that length being 5 meters and that these dragons belch chlorine, which although toxic, isn't known to damage equipment nearly as effectively as a burst of fire. Next for red dragons, pretty much no information from the books or games is known about these dragons, except for the fact that they are said to have reddish coloured scales. They are, however, expanded upon in the Witcher tabletop RPG. In this role-playing game, they are said to not only have reddish scales, but also dwell in mountain caves. They can breathe fire at a temperature hot enough to melt metal, and this dragon can also grow up to be a length of 15 meters, making this breed one of the largest types of dragon. Next for black dragons, yet again, there is not much information presented to us in the books or games on this dragon, but we do know that these dragons aren't actually black and are said to be instead dark brown. They do, however, possess incredible abilities. The only known ability that they are said to have, though, is to be invulnerable, and pretty much this means that their scales are stronger than any set of armour. We get a lot more information about these dragons from the tabletop RPG as we find out that these dragons live in swamps and wetlands, and also can spend entire days just basking in mud. They can also spit acid that is much stronger than the acid spat by green dragons as their acid can actually erode any armour. These dragons can also grow to about 10 metres in length. Weirdly enough, some information about these dragons may have potentially been revealed to us in another of Sapkowski's works. As in the role-playing game made by Sapkowski, he states that not only do black dragons live in swamps, they also spit a substance that has the same effect as mustard gas. And if you don't know what mustard gas is, mustard gas was a chemical agent used in World War I, and it causes severe burns to the skin and eyes, and can cause serious problems to the respiratory tract. 
so pretty much it stops you breathing. Next for white dragons, a white dragon is one of the rarest species of dragons, and can supposedly be found in the far north. These dragons are only known from the tales of travellers, as they are so rare only a select few have been blessed with a glimpse of them. These travellers have stated that their scales can range from light grey to bluish white. This dragon is also identical in size to a black dragon, so 10 metres, and is said to be able to breathe a torrent of frost, which can freeze their opponent solid. So picture that upgrade you can have for Ard, but on a massive scale. These dragons have also been referenced in the Sword of Destiny, the Witcher tabletop RPG, and the World of the Witcher book. Next for rock dragons, out of every single breed of dragon, the rock dragon is the breed that we know the least about. From the name alone, we can assume that they most likely live in similar areas to green dragons, arid rocky areas, or perhaps even mountainous areas. It is best to assume that this breed was wiped out before the series began. Most people put it down to overhunting by witches, but it may possibly have died for other reasons, such as say their source of food being hunted by humans or other predators, for example green dragons. Rock dragons are only mentioned once in the books, and this is in the story A Grain of Truth, where Geralt encounters a cursed man by the name of Nivellen. In Nivellen's dining room is the mounted head of a rock dragon. Nivellen states that it was killed by his grandfather. Perhaps this is an implication that people used to actively hunt rock dragons based on the fact that they don't have the best abilities, which I will go into now. So in the Witcher tabletop RPG, Rock dragons are described as a rare species of dragon, who can be found in dry, rocky areas or perhaps stony plains. Their colouring is said to be similar to that of a black dragon, but they are about half the size, so 5 metres just like the green dragon. They also do not breathe anything, so they can't breathe out any acid, steam or fire, and instead they use their teeth and claws as a way to fight. Finally, to end today's video, I'm going to discuss golden dragons. This breed of dragon is the rarest of all dragons in the Witcher universe, and for a long time was considered the stuff of legends. This was until a golden dragon known as Villain Tretenmurth revealed himself to a company of humans, dwarves, magic users, and of course the Witcher Geralt. This dragon possesses the unique ability to polymorph. This means that golden dragons can transform into any shape, even that of a human. We do not know if there are any more dragons than Villain Tretemurth, or if he is simply the result of a unique genetic mutation. So I would actually be interested to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. Do you think there's more golden dragons, or do you think Villain Tretemurth is perhaps something, say, similar to Gaunter Odin? And if you don't understand what I mean by that, there's only one of him. This breed of dragon, like most breeds of dragon, is expanded upon in the Witcher tabletop RPG. We know from this RPG that these dragons can belch fire and hot steam, and can also also reach an average size of 20 meters, making it the largest of all dragons. We also know that this breed of dragon is so legendary that an entire country was named after it, and this is the country known as Zeracania. Currently known gold dragons include Zeracantiment, Villain Tretenmurth, and Saskia. However, as said earlier, Saskia cannot be considered a true golden dragon, as her mother is said to be a green dragon, making her a half green dragon, half golden. So that's the end of today's video guys, I finished covering dragons as a whole now, I plan to do videos on each individual dragon, such as Murtabraka, Villain Tretemurth, Saskia, Okvist, Zeracantiment, and I do think they'll all be really fun videos to make, but for the species as a whole, I believe I've covered them fully here. Honestly, dragons are one of my favourite creatures in this universe, I think they're so amazing, I believe they were actually on the world before the conjunction of spheres, and this is technically the dragon's world, however some people also say that it may have been the monster's world, and we honestly can't say for sure. Anyway guys, if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop it a like, it really does help me out. If you want me to continue making Witcher lore videos or videos like this, liking the video really lets me know that you enjoy it and it honestly helps out the channel, so thank you to every single one of you that does that. If this is the first video you're finding on my channel and you want to see more high fantasy lore videos, I do the Elder Scrolls every so often, I do gameplay, I do Witcher lore obviously, be sure to subscribe to the channel as then you'll get the video in your subscription box whenever I upload one. So thank you to everybody that subscribes. Also of course, be sure to go and follow me on Twitter. Which I'd love to get a few more of you guys on there. I really appreciate it whenever anybody tunes in for the streams, as honestly, it's such a fun time. I love to talk to you guys. I play Gwen, I play The Witcher, I played God of War recently, I plan to play Bloodborne, I play Dark Souls, I play loads of games that are really, really fun. I also do some IRL stuff sometimes where I can just chat to you guys. So if you want to make sure you don't miss those streams, be sure to go to the description of this video and follow me on Twitch. Thank you to every single one of you that follows me there. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I do updates on there whenever any video comes out. If YouTube isn't 
sending my video to your subscription box, which seems to happen quite a lot to some of you. I also post the videos on Twitter whenever they come out, so you can make sure you don't miss it. I also post updates on there, anything that's going on with me personally. I recently showed you guys my dog, and quite a lot of you seem to like him, so that was really cool. So if you want to make sure you don't miss tweets like that, be sure to go and follow me on there. And thank you to every single one of you that follows me on all of these platforms, as obviously it takes a lot of time to manage YouTube and Twitch, so I appreciate you guys supporting me. And finally, to end today's video, I just want to say a big thank you to the Patreon pledges. I honestly appreciate it every single time one of you guys donates to me. I also appreciate everyone that's currently donating to me. It helps me out so much. That extra little bit of money coming in allows me to do these videos, allows me to get better stuff for the videos, and allows me to do more things. For example, with the Patreon money, I saved it up over a little bit of time, and I bought a PlayStation, and I've been doing God of War. It's been really fun doing that with you guys, and I also plan to get a better microphone soon to make these videos even more crisp. So thank you to every single one of you that donates. You honestly help out, and I'm glad to put all of your names at the end of these videos. Anyway guys, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video, and I will see you in the next one. Have an awesome rest of the week.